Thank you very much. God, applause at a press conference. <laughs> a former press secretary, this is a um, new experience. Um, I spent basically over three decades working at the heart of government, um, trying to sort out the sorts of problems we're dealing with at the moment, um, working with the procedures and precedents that have built up over time to find the best possible solutions. It's quite clear that in this national crisis, normal procedures have broken down. We are facing a situation without precedent. This is a time, in my view, for strong government. This, the Brexit issue is so difficult and so all-encompassing. Unfortunately, we are seeing the downsides of minority government, particularly one propped up by the DUP. The absence of a government in Northern Ireland for the last two years has meant the true voice of Northern Ireland is missing. On Brexit, I've always supported the need to find the best possible deal. And in my view, the government, assisted by civil servants, who've too often been under attack for doing their job, have come up with a reasonable deal given the Prime Minister's red lines. And I commend Ollie Robbins and his team for their hard work. It is clear, however, that Parliament disagrees. And it is equally clear that Parliament cannot yet agree on what it does want. This is largely a function of the impossibility of crafting a deal that could meet all the contradictory promises made for leaving the EU in the last referendum. <coughs> we are at an impasse, not a standstill. Our country is now hurtling ever faster towards the nightmare scenario of a no-deal Brexit. But the Prime Minister yesterday opened a window, and we must try to climb through it. The civil service can, as ever, help. We are not starting with a blank piece of paper. We know what the government's deal looks like, and we have seen in the last week, through the indicative votes, which proposals enjoy the most support among MPs in Parliament. As a result, civil servants structuring the discussions between the Prime Minister and the Leader of the Opposition should know where the starting point is found. Indeed, it would be unthinkable for Theresa May and Jeremy Corbyn to exclude the principle which has twice topped the votes of MPs, namely putting any deal to the people in a confirmatory public ballot. Therefore, our civil servants should start the process of looking at how that public vote would work, including exploring the timetabling and the necessary paving legislation. We all know the consequences of civil servants not being allowed to do appropriate contingency planning. And I look back on my days thinking how fortunate it was that we did contingency planning about coalitions. Uh, they, like everyone else, are keen to find a solution, that's the civil service, that can move us forward so that they can work on all the other great challenges of government, from housing to the environment, from low wages and productivity to climate change and international terrorism. The longer we obsess about Europe, the longer we put off tackling any of them. That's one of the great opportunity costs of the last few years. And the way to get clarity and closure on Europe is to let the people decide on whether to go ahead with the best available Brexit deal or decide to stay in the EU. Whatever the result, I think this is crucial, we should make sure it is legally binding. The country can then move on and begin healing. A people's vote isn't an option in this national Brexit crisis. It is a process that can solve it. Thank you. Now,